Repent and believe in the gospel. That's Jesus' message. Uh, Mark sort of sums it up that way, and many of you would have heard that uh, this past Wednesday at Ash Wednesday. Repent and believe in the gospel. It's going to be an awkward question. I was just wondering if you knew what it meant. You know, it, it is, is that not just an odd thing? Because if you're like many people, you might be sitting there thinking like, well, I sort of know what it means, but if this was a school assignment and someone asked you to take out a sheet of paper and write a paragraph or two about what it means to repent and to believe in the gospel, you might find yourself, I'm not sure where to start. The theme that we chose for Lent this year is called Foundations. I wanted to take a look at things like this, things that we sort of know, but uh, maybe not really, or not as well as we might, and take a look at them and see if we can just benefit from that, benefit from sort of shoring up, if you will, our foundations. What do we, what do we believe? What do we know? And no better place to start than this little phrase of Jesus. So it's not hard, though. Repent. Most of you probably are thinking, well, repent means quit sinning. And that's true, but there is more to it than that. Repent is actually not a religious word. We use it in a religious context, but it's actually a word that simply means change, turn around, go in another direction. So, I don't know about you, but I have many times repented in my life from eating junk food to eating fruits and vegetables. I have, if you will, turned my life in a different direction. I once was on a solo hike and uh, just made a mistake and ended up walking a full mile or so in the wrong direction. And I had to repent and turn around and walk back to the right direction. See, and so that's important for you to understand because you notice Jesus does not just say repent. Because if he did, he'd be saying, turn around. Your life is going in the wrong direction. Turn around. And you might realize, yes, my life is going in the wrong direction. But it would leave the question open, what am I turning to? In other words, if I'm not going to go in this path, what path am I supposed to go? And so that's why Jesus says, repent and believe in the gospel. But then that brings up the other kind of odd term in this, what does gospel mean? It is important for you to understand the, the term as it is understood has actually changed, if you will, slightly over the years from the time Jesus uses it until you and I use it. We don't need to go into all of that. Um, but, and indeed, there's a lot of angles that you can look at the word gospel. I just want to look at two. Probably the one that is most familiar, the one that, again, might just be in your mind is, well... Believing in the gospel is a way of saying, I need to believe in Jesus. I need to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I need to believe that he um, died for my sins. I need to believe that he died and was resurrected from the dead. You know, that, that's part of the gospel, and it certainly is. But the other parts of that, of that, that word, the, maybe in some respects, equally as important is the idea of how to live. Because if you think about it, when Jesus says this to these people, repent and believe in the gospel, he's not actually talking a great deal about you know, salvation and belief in him and all that stuff in that moment. He is mostly talking about how to live. He, that phrase primarily in Jesus' context is, hey, you guys are headed in the wrong direction. You should repent and head in this direction. And then he proceeds to tell us in what direction that is. And you know all of this. If you want to, um, it's in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, the Sermon on the Mount. You can read it easily in 10 minutes. Probably could take your time and carefully read it in maybe 15 
to really good use. But near the beginning in chapter 5, Jesus does this whole series of things. You have heard it said. Like you have heard it said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. That's the direction you're headed in right now. That's what people have told you. That's what society has told you. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. And that is Jesus' message. He says, he, all these different times in this in the sermon, he says, you guys are, you, you, you could be heading in the wrong direction. I want you to repent of that. I need you to repent. I need you to turn and head in this direction. And if you know some of those passages, you know, one of them is, you've heard it said, don't commit adultery. But I say, even if you lust in your mind, you have already committed adultery. If you dig into this, you'll start to realize that, well, that was a pretty easy way to go in a lot of ways. Jesus is calling us to something much, much more challenging, but, of course, much better. That's the abundant life we keep talking about. Jesus wants us to go this way. Yeah, it's hard, but it's the best way. And so that, that's our challenge for maybe for Lent, certainly for our whole lives, is this phrase, repent and believe in the gospel. Realize that in maybe our entire lives, but mostly just probably an area of our life, we are, we're, we're, we're doing what others have told us to do. But Jesus is telling us to do something different. And whether that's in terms of how you handle your money or how you handle your relationships or any, in any area of your life, it, the choice becomes very clear. Which direction do you want to go? I hope that you'd want to listen to the Lord and you'd want to say, yeah, you know, especially those of us a little older, yeah, I've been going down this road for a while. It doesn't really work. So I will. I will repent. And I'll go with Jesus. And perhaps for the youngins here, maybe they'll be spared going down that road altogether. Maybe at a young age, they'll realize, nah, I can see now that's never going to work. So I won't even have to repent. I'm just going to believe in the gospel.